Hello, Set Free family. This is Caleb Howard, uh, your operations pastor. Well, at least as of June the 1st anyways. But as you can see, I'm already getting uh, my feet wet, so to speak. Uh, but I want to say first and foremost, thank you so much uh, for your warm embrace, uh, your hospitality, your love that you showed uh, my family and I this past Sunday as we were introduced officially to the church and as coming in on full-time staff here with Set Free Church. And I want to say that we are forever grateful and we are excited about this opportunity and this privilege to come and to serve alongside of each of you. Uh, we are just absolutely ecstatic about what God has in store, what He is planning uh, for this beautiful, amazing body of believers. Amen. And we just cannot wait to see the story continue to unfold right here at Set Free Church. And so again, I thank you for your warm embrace, your welcome that you extended to Ashley, Lily, and I this past Sunday. And I want to remind you uh, that we have our Thursday's Thought uh, with Pastor Steve uh, tomorrow. And then, of course, we are going to be back uh, live here in the sanctuary this coming Sunday at 10 a.m. And I tell you what an amazing, a powerful service that we had uh, for our first back to uh, church service this past Sunday. The power of God was very strong in this place. There was an atmosphere, a spirit of excitement, anticipation and expectation for what is ahead. Uh, and I'm telling you, people were worshiping. The word was going forth uh, from our pastor. And what a wonderful and a tremendous service we had. And so we want to encourage you to come back and to be with us this Sunday at 10 a.m. And I know, I promise you, you will be blessed and you will uh, leave changed and healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so what an honor it is to come back for this midweek uh, video uh, to share with you the Word of God uh, for this time and this occasion. Uh, last Wednesday, if you will remember, uh, I brought to you a word about how there is more. There is more that God has in store. There's more glory. There's more power. I brought it to you from that Old Testament prophetic book of Haggai of where the prophet was declaring to the people of God that the glory of the latter house will be greater than the glory of the former house. Amen. And we are truly living in the latter days. We're living in those last times, those last seasons, if you will. And, and what the prophet has already said and what he has spoken, I believe we are seeing it happen right now and it's going to continue to grow and to crescendo. And so I am excited. I'm very optimistic about what God has in store for His church. Amen. As we continue to endeavor to do the work of the kingdom of God in this hour and in our generation. And so for tonight, I want to bring to you a word simply entitled, Behold Him. Behold Him. And our text scripture for uh, the midweek Bible study is coming from the book of 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. And this is what the word of the Lord says right here. It says, but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. We understand that, that this is speaking of those of us who are identified as living under the new covenant. Those of us who are a part of the New Testament church. So you have to understand that under the old covenant, uh, a great example of this is, is the servant of Moses, a mighty, mighty servant and man of God. And when he saw the glory of God, when he beheld the glory of God, how many remembers a story in the Old Testament that Moses had to put on a veil 
a covering over his face because he couldn't within his own natural abilities behold the very glory of God. He had to wear that veil. And you know, as a result of him encountering the glory of God, it changed him. It changed his character. It changed his person. Matter of fact, the Bible says that his very countenance shone as bright even as the noonday sun. And I mean, it was a, a remarkable experience that Moses had. But I'm glad to know that you and I that are a part of the New Testament church that are living in and under the new covenant. I'm glad to know that because of the supreme sacrifice of Jesus Christ, because of the blood of Jesus Christ, that we now have free access into the very throne room of God, into the holy of holies. We now can freely access the very glory of God. And I want you to know that if we ever needed to see, to witness, to experience the glory of God, it is right now in this hour of the church. There is a generation that needs to witness, that needs to see, that needs to experience the real, the authentic, and the tangible glory and the presence of God. But maybe, you are, maybe you're sitting there at home this evening and you're wondering, well, what exactly is the glory of God? That is a good question. It is a very complex and in-depth question. And the truth is we never can really understand to its entirety of what the glory of God is. But I do know this, that according to the scriptures and the word of God, I believe that the glory of God is the manifestation of the fullness of who God really is. Did you hear what I said? The glory of God is the manifestation of the fullness of who God really is. See, we have so many in the church world today that are satisfied with simply dating God. Do you understand what I'm saying? Just, just courting God. You know, just having a once a week experience on Sunday mornings with God. But you see, God is looking for a people in this hour. He is searching the earth for a people in this hour that are hungry to be in a covenant relationship with Him. A day-to-day -day and intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, again, the glory of God is a manifestation of the fullness of the characteristics and the attributes of who God really is. I don't know about you, but I want to know God. I don't want to just know head information about God. I just, I don't want to just know facts about God, but I want to know God. I want to experience God. And I want you to know that there's coming a greater glory to the church in this hour, in the coming days, in the coming weeks and months, as we continue to seek after His face and as we continue to press into His presence and as we continue to advance His gospel across the nations of this earth, we are going to experience and we are going to be accompanied with a greater glory that comes from heaven, a greater glory of God. Amen. A, a more simplistic, if you will, understanding of what the glory of God is. How many knows that those of us who are parents, Ashley and I, we have one daughter. We are blessed with one beautiful 10-year-old daughter. Her name is Lily. And... As parents, you understand, and likewise so do I, that our pride, our joy, our glory, if you will, it is our offspring. It is our children. That is our pride. That is our glory. So when we are talking about the glory of God, what is His glory? A good way to understand it, the glory of the Father is none other than His Son, His beloved his only begotten Son. Can somebody say His name? His name is Jesus Christ. That, in fact, is the glory of God. It is the revelation. It is the manifestation. It is the experience. It is the person of Jesus Christ. That is the glory of God. And so I believe in this hour there's going to be a greater revelation of the person of Jesus Christ. 
there's going to be a greater manifestation of the person of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul, he made a profound statement and a declaration. He said that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings. You see, I want to know Him today. When we're talking about experiencing the glory of God, we're talking about receiving a greater revelation of who Jesus Christ is. And so in our text, it says, But again, we all, every one of us that are washed in the blood of Jesus, that are a part of the New Testament church, with unveiled face. Thank God the veil was rent from top to bottom when Jesus gave His life upon the cross of Calvary. When He shed His blood upon the cross. When He said, it is finished. The Bible says there was an earthquake that hit the place. And, and the veil that was in the temple that separated us as common man from the very presence and the glory of God. That veil, the Bible says, was rent from top to bottom. So there is no need for a veil any longer. And now we can access the glory of God. It says, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. As easy as it is for you and I to go before our mirror at home, whether it's in our bedroom or our bathroom, and we can behold our countenance, we can behold our appearance or our reflection, we, because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we can freely access and we can freely behold the glory of God. And He said, I'm going to transform you by that glory. And I'm going to take you from glory to glory, implying that there are new dimensions in God that we have yet to experience. You see, some of us, we have become satisfied with just... Uh, just scratching the surface, if you will, of really understanding who God is, really experiencing that glory, that glory of God that we are talking about tonight. But I want you to know that there are deeper dimensions in God. There are higher heights in God that we have yet to obtain or yet to experience. And I hear the Lord saying that I am calling you up to a higher place, to a deeper place in my glory. I want you to experience a new level, a new dimension of my glory. And what I see for our church, our family, this body of believers as Set Free Church, that God is truly taking us over the threshold. He's taking us in, into a new place, a new dimension, a new level of His glory. And I'm excited about that. Amen. And it's going to be life-changing for us Praise the Lord. And it's going to impact the Powdersville and the Easley area. And it's going to impact the Dominican Republic and other diverse nations across this globe because that is what the glory of God does. You can never encounter His glory without being transformed and without leaving change. You might have come in one way, but by the glory and the power of God, you're going to leave differently. That's what the glory of God does. So I'm talking about tonight the subject of beholding Him. What is that term? What does that word behold mean? It simply means to see or to observe, to gaze upon, to pay attention to. That is what behold means. And I want you to know, I want to submit to you tonight that we were made, we were created to behold. Do you understand what I'm saying? We were made to behold. We are hardwired, if you will, to behold glory. If you're like me, I love to admire. I love to talk about. I love to look at, to think about amazing, magnificent, and good things. Anything from sunsets to sunrises, maybe for some of you to athletic feats and victories, some of you to YouTube videos showing people doing amazing things, and in all the ways that we behold glory, those things are telling us what the Bible has already told us, that we were made to look 
at God. We were made to behold the glory of God. Our souls were made to behold God, to be caught up in Him, to be overwhelmed by Him. Because you see, Jesus is the glory that is behind all other glory. You and I, we have beheld many glorious events in our lives. Maybe from the birth of our child. Maybe, maybe seeing some grand uh, landscape or from some vacation or, or tropical paradise that we experience. Seeing the sun rise or seeing the sun set. We beheld all sorts of glorious occasions and events in our life. But I want to tell you who the author is behind all of these. I want to tell you who the greatest glory that we we will be ever behold, and that is Jesus Christ. So I want to ask you tonight this question. What are you beholding? In this hour, in this season, what are you beholding? In other words, what has your attention? Think about it with me. And answer honestly, right now, in this occasion, in this hour, what has your attention? What are you beholding? You see, what you believe is the most beautiful and worthy of gazing or beholding in your life will actually translate into what or who you are. In fact, you become what you behold. Did you hear what I said? You become what you behold. What you behold is what you will reflect. What you behold is in fact what you worship. So let me ask you this question. Are you beholding the Savior, Jesus Christ, or are you beholding yourself? Because again, you become what you behold. You reflect what you behold. You worship what you behold. You see, life is full of distractions. Right now, there are many distractions that are all around us in our society. All sorts of distractions from this pandemic, from this virus that has been identified as COVID-19, you know, uh, maybe, maybe unemployment, uh, maybe financial crisis, uh, maybe, maybe the loss of a loved one, uh, maybe marital problems. Um, you know, it could be all sorts of things that, that are distracting us in this season and in this hour that's moving our attention away from the glory of God away from the person of Jesus Christ. And it is putting our attention upon these things that are designed to distract us. You see, oftentimes we look at distractions as, you know, what does it really matter if we become a little distracted from time to time? But you see, if a distraction is not properly dealt with, distractions can be deadly. They can cause great destruction Distractions lead to destruction. An example of this is what is one of the leading causes, statistically speaking, in our nation, what is one of the leading causes of fatalities on the highways, on the interstate? What is one of the leading causes, statistically speaking, of car accidents? It is distracted driving. It is those of us who get behind the wheel of our vehicles and we become distracted, whether it's, whether it's we're eating a quick bite from a drive through or whether we are got a text message or a phone call or whether we're trying to find a certain station on the radio or, or whatever it is, all of the distractions that can happen while we're behind that wheel and the next thing we know, we're in a car accident. The next thing we know, someone has done lost their life. Why? Because of a simple distraction, which verifies that distractions can be destructive and they can be deadly. So I want to admonish you, church, set free church, 
that we ought to be careful, very careful in this hour and in this season, not to allow the enemy, not to allow our society, not to allow the devil to distract us from the glory of God, to distract us from the person of Jesus Christ. Because if we allow the enemy to distract us, and if we do not take control of this distraction and get it out of our lives, it will ultimately bring destruction. And yes, it could even bring death. So what is it that has your attention? What is it that you are beholding? Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, a very familiar passage of Scripture in the New Testament. It says this, Therefore we also... Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, every distraction, and the sin which does so easily ensnare us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, beholding Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You see, we're on a race, church. From the moment that you were born again, from the moment that you surrendered your heart and your life to Jesus Christ, you entered into a race. Yes, you did. And there's going to be many things upon this path, upon this race that the enemy is going to orchestrate to try to distract you, to try to take your attention off of who it should be upon. And that is Jesus. Many, many things are going to be orchestrated to bring distraction to your life. But I want to encourage you today to lay aside the distractions to lay aside the negativity, to lay aside the doubt, to lay aside the fear. And as the Scriptures has admonished us in Hebrews chapter 12, to set your eyes upon Him, to behold Him, to look unto Jesus, who is the author of your story, who is the author of our story as Set Free Church, who is the one who is going to finish the story. And I come by to tell somebody today that it's not over. I don't care what the devil has said to you, it's not over. You might be sitting there in your living room right now and you might be so fearful because of things that, that are coming upon the earth, but it is not over. God has the final say. And until God says it's over, it's not over. He's still writing your story. Amen. God's still got glory that is ahead of you that you're going to obtain, that you're going to experience. Amen. That is going to change your life. That is going to bring back your wayward sons and daughters, prodigal sons and daughters. That is going to bring restoration into your home, into your marriage. That is going to increase your business adventures or, or whatever it is, the desires of your heart. God said, I'm going to meet them. I'm going to meet your needs. I'm going to give you the desires of your heart when you look unto me. That's why the Bible says in the Gospel of Matthew to seek first the kingdom of God. To seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. You see, there was one individual who was anointed with this message of behold. And he was prophesied about, his coming was prophesied about in the book of Isaiah, in that prophetic book in the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 3. And this is what the prophecy was. It says, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Some of you know where I'm going. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And then in verse 5 it says, The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. And in verse 9 of Isaiah 40 it says, O Zion, you who bring good tidings, get up into the high mountain O Jerusalem, you who bring good tidings, lift up your voice and strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. 
You see, this was a prophecy of one that was to come that was going to be anointed with this message of behold. This prophecy was speaking about none other than John the Baptist. You remember the story? You remember the account of the great man of God that was identified as John the Baptist? When this prophecy was given in the book of Isaiah, it was about this man. But this, the fulfillment of that prophecy did not come until approximately 700 years later. How many knows when God speaks a thing, sometimes it doesn't happen overnight. Sometimes you have to just hold on and you have to keep the faith and you have to keep believing God until you see the fruition of that promise come to pass, come to a realization. 700 years later, the prophecy came to pass. John the Baptist came on the scene who was the cousin of Jesus Christ. His mother was Elizabeth. Jesus' mother was Mary. Elizabeth and Mary were cousins. You know the story. And as Mary was holding Jesus in her womb and her cousin Elizabeth was holding John the Baptist in her womb, when Mary came and encountered her cousin Elizabeth and they both were impregnated with Jesus and with John the Baptist, the Bible says that even that child that was within Elizabeth's womb knew who Jesus was that was in the womb of Mary. And the Bible says John leaped in his mother's womb. The Bible says that John was baptized in the Holy Spirit even in his mother's womb. He was anointed with this message of behold. You see, he was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. He was the one that was going to prepare the way for the ministry of Jesus Christ upon this earth. And so that brings us in closing to the Gospel of John chapter 1. Verses 6 and 7, and it says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light, who is Jesus, that all through him might believe. And in verse 23 of John 1, it says, He said, John said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord as the prophet Isaiah said. And in verse 29, he, he said, it says, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him. You see, John, he, he was called John the Baptist not because of a denominational affiliation, but he was called John the Baptist because he was the one who baptized believers in water, immersed them in water. And so he was in the river on this particular day in John chapter 1 and verse 29 with this account. And he was baptizing new believers, immersing them in water, just as was commanded to do, as was the custom and the practice to do. And so it is today. And on the horizon, John all of a sudden saw the one that he was to prepare the way for, the one that he was anointed to lead the people to behold, to set their attention upon. He saw Jesus Christ, his cousin, coming. And what did John cry out? What did he proclaim? He said this. He said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And don't you know that all of the attention of all of those believers that was in the river, that was on the banks of the river, they turned to this one, to the one, Jesus Christ. And they set their gaze and their attention. They set their eyes upon Him. Behold the Lamb of God. There's an old song we used to sing in the church. An old hymn and it says this, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full into His wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim from the light of His wonderful grace. What are you beholding? What has your attention? I want to encourage you today to lay aside the distractions and to set your attention, to set your gaze, to set your eyes to behold Jesus Christ who is the very glory of God. Set free, I want you to know God has taken us to a new place of glory. You mark my words. God has taken us into a new dimension, a new level of the glory of God. Things are about to begin to really increase in this place 
amongst this body of believers. And God is going to use us to do exploits for Him in this earth for His glory and for His honor. So I want you to be encouraged tonight. Be blessed tonight by the Word of God. Receive the Word. Grab a hold of it. Partake of it. Digest it. Allow it to get rooted within your heart and your spirit. And set your eyes on Him like never before. Lay aside the distractions of this world, of this pandemic that we're in. And set your gaze and your attention upon Jesus Christ because He is the one that is going to see us through. And He's the one that is going to empower us to be His church in this hour. Amen. We love you, Ashley, Lily, and I. We love you. We appreciate you. And we are so excited to be able to serve with you in this body. And we want you to know that God has good things in store for us. As I've said, and Pastor has already said, the best is not behind us, but it is before us. Believe that. We love you. God bless you.